Hello, my name is Joe, and welcome to another edition of Joe's Super Fun Tabulous PC Gaming Channel, where I'm answering a question. What is Steam? If you've ever heard of Steam and wondered, what the heck is all of that about? Well, the short, short version is that Steam is a digital publishing and rights management platform uh, created by the Valve Corporation. And, well, you can tell the logo. This is intended to be uh, part of a Steam engine, so a yeah, locomotive. And so you can just type Steam to your favorite uh, search engine, as you saw, and uh, generally this will be the very first thing that pops up. And so this platform allows various different publishers to publish uh, digital goods. Now, those goods are currently primarily video games, but don't be fooled. It's not the only thing that you can find on Steam. You can actually find applications. You can find videos and television shows. There's music. All kinds of stuff is available on Steam, although it is going to be primarily video games, you know, nine times out of ten. Now, the uh, the DRM part of it is, is that you have to log in through a client in order to access the uh, license for anything that you are using from Steam. Some people will see this as a downer. They're like, well, I remember the days when all the software came in a box. That's true. Um, you know, I remember those good old days. I'd go into a store, I'd take my game off the shelf. It's basically just a box with a disc in it and a manual, and that was it. And they would try to make it a nice full-color manual if they actually cared in order to make you feel like you got more money than, you know, or more value for your money than just some plastic disc. Um, now, the, the problem is, is that you've got to ship that box to stores, you know, that's after it's been printed and... and uh, it takes up uh, retail floor space, and there's like money involved, and you know people are looking at inventory turns in order to figure out whether or not they're profitable. Yada yada yada. Basically, money, lots of money. But with a digital good, this is taking up space on a server someplace, and so you can create a title and perpetually sell it forever. Um, and so as time goes by, and the early uh, purchasers get it out of the way, it becomes harder and harder to sell that title. So the title gets discounted. And so from a cons consumer's perspective, um, <clears throat> they have these seasonal sales on Steam, and Steam seems to have a lot of excuses for sales. And it's not a bad thing. Um, so like currently, this is the Steam Game Festival for, for the summer edition for 2020. And so we have various different uh, titles and franchises. Like, for example, the entire Elder Scrolls franchise is on sale. And, uh, oh, I like this. <laughs> you can buy everything for $23. So, you know, you can get old titles that were, you know, Game of the Year editions. These were all a lot of fun. Skyrim, uh, Morrowind. Oblivion is one that I haven't played. Hmm, maybe I'll pick it up for 5 bucks. And, uh, you know, the, the great thing is that you can find all these titles. You would never see these kinds of discounts at a physical store unless the store was going out of business. Um so that's one of the nice things. Now, the downside, and some people will point this out, is they're like, well, Joe, if I have to log into a client in order to access the license for the software that I uh, paid access to, if Steam goes away, my investment goes away, right? Yes. Yes, it, yes, it absolutely does. If Steam were to go belly up, everything on the platform becomes inaccessible, and that's that. Is Steam likely to go belly up? Nope, not, no more than Microsoft is. <laughs> okay, granted, Steam's not quite as big as Microsoft, but as far as gaming is concerned, uh, Steam is the heavyweight. Everybody wants to be like Steam. Um, for now, at least at the time of this uh, recording, Steam has no equal when it comes to uh, digital uh, content distribution, you know, particularly uh, in the case of gaming. So this is the Steam website. Uh, like I said, but here, this is the actual Steam client that you would install, and you can play Steam on, you know, PCs, you know, whether you're running Windows, Linux, uh, Macintosh, um, you know, you can use it in all of those platforms, with open, and there are uh, various different uh, things on here that will support those platforms, and they'll, they'll tell you which platforms they're appropriate for, although mostly it'll be Windows-based stuff. Um, Linux looks like it's going to be number two, and Mac's coming dead last. So, you know, if, if you want a game, uh, be running Windows or Linux. It, it'll probably be better in the long run. I'm rooting for Linux. I want to see more and more Linux titles work. And in fact, uh, I plan to be playing some more Linux titles on my platform just to see how well they do. 
So this is my actual uh, library. And as you can see, yeah, lots of video games. Um, in fact, so many video games that uh, during one Steam sale, I'll even tell you this story. I actually got my credit card turned off. Not because I went over my limit. It was just on the sale. I kept paging through it. And I was like, oh, there's something I want. There, five bucks. Oh, there's something I want. Oh, here's 10 bucks. Look at this. This one's only 20 and it was originally 60 so I'll buy it. And so I just kept buying things uh, here and there. And my credit card company saw the activity and they're like, and someone stole this guy's credit card. We better protect him and turn it off. So I had to call him. I'm like, no, no, that's me. I bought all those games. <laughs> Could you please turn my card back on? Because I want to buy more. Uh, but I learned a lesson. Uh, <clears throat> if you're going to buy a lot of games in a Steam sale, put them all in the cart and buy them all at once in one shot. Not several times individually because it looks like the card got ripped off. So it's just a little bit of advice uh, from my own experience. Okay, now uh, the way all these titles work is that once they're in your quote-unquote Steam library, you just hit install and you can download it to the computer that you're at. Now you can install your Steam client on multiple computers. However, Steam will ask you to verify uh, each one of the machines. So, uh, for example, they have an application called Steam Guard, which is kind of like a, a key. Uh, and so with Steam Guard, it makes it very easy if you link that to your account to where it'll give you a code every 30 seconds, which is probably based on some kind of hashing algorithm using a seed value. And uh, so using that, you can just log into any computer you have. In my case, I've got more than one. So I've got a, a PC in my living room so I can sit on the couch and enjoy some gaming because it's got a little, mine's a reclining couch, so it's really nice. If I'm not streaming or recording things, I'm on the couch with my feet up and having fun. Um, and then I've got one in my bedroom so I can lay in bed and game with a wireless keyboard and mouse. And then when I'm making content like this, I'm sitting in front of a big, you know, workstation with a whole bunch of monitors and so I, I have steam on all of those and the fun part is that in many cases not only can you log in from all these machines but with cloud saving i can start the game on one computer and say eh, you know I'm, I'm feeling kind of tired i, I want to go lay on the couch for a while so i can log out and then continue the game on the other machine because all the the saves go up into the cloud now not not every title on Steam will support cloud save, so you'll have to look it up individually to see which titles say that they uh, support cloud saving. And uh, that way you'll be able to figure out which ones you can or can't expect to save to the cloud. Some will only save locally. Uh, those get a little bit more annoying. But um, generally, by and large, they're, they're pretty good. As you can see, I have all kinds of silly titles. Uh, they're organized alphabetically, so, uh, once you have them uh, installed, you know, from here you would just hit play. Now, one misconception about Steam is that some people believe, incorrectly, that you have to log into Steam each and every time online in order to play. And that's actually not true. You do have to log into Steam, the client, but it does have an offline mode that you can utilize. This is probably... I'm, Although uh, my, my guess is that this is probably intended so that if I had Steam on a laptop and I'm going on a trip and wherever I'm going, may not have internet access that's reliable or available, or maybe it's filtered and blocked, because uh, we see that with a lot of open uh, Wi-Fi. You know, if the Wi-Fi isn't extremely dangerous, it's filtered to where it only goes for port 80 traffic, which is, you know, and, and 443, which is web pages, you know, big deal. And, uh, you know, Steam wants to use some other ports <laughs> and they might be blocked. So you can say, I want to play an offline mode and it will say, OK, well, as long as you log into the Steam platform at least once every so many days, because there's probably a certificate with a date and timestamp value in the background there that says, OK, he logged into Steam the last time on this date and time. And I checked all his uh, digital rights and he has access to all these things which are installed on this computer. And so it will let you play offline for a period of time. And uh, I'll be honest, I don't know exactly what the period is. I think the last time I tried it, I, I thought it was three days or maybe it was only two. I'm not sure. Um, but I was able to do it. And so, you know, when my Internet goes out, I'm able to play locally and have fun. And, uh, and well, as long as it's a title that you can play locally, some of these are online titles only. Um, see, this one here, uh, Unreal Tournament, is uh, one that you play locally, but something else like 
oh, let's say Star Trek Online, <laughs> if the internet's down, you're not playing this title. Um, it's just not going to happen because, well, you have to play on the STO servers. It's a multiplayer game. It's not intended to be played solo. So uh, each title will be different based on, on what they have. So you'll have to figure that out uh, by looking at the uh, information uh, for that those titles. As I mentioned, it is a distribution platform for all kinds of things. So if I were to go here to my library, um, let's say, and right now we're, we're looking at games, um, but there are videos too. So I'm a bit of an anime fan, so I've got all the Ghost in the Shells that were available at the time that I was looking for it. And as a matter of fact, there's new Ghost in the Shell stuff that's been coming out lately. Um, so I've been enjoying that too. And I love the fact that they found the original voice actors because I liked the English dub um, uh, of the original Ghost in the Shell. It, it wasn't, wasn't bad. Um, not only that, but we can also find applications, although as you can see, I, I don't have much as far as software goes. At the time of this recording, everybody seems to be on a rampage to punish content creators for any having any kind of a music in the background. So that's why I'm actually looking at creating my own music for my own background, because I'm, I'm absolutely sick of this. If you have one second of audio that is like vaguely heard from some radio in another room in the background of one of your stuff they attack you and they claim your whole video and oh, what a pain so we'll see we'll see whether or not i'm able to create anything and, and that's also the purpose of the sound center here um i've been testing video cards and so that's what 3d mark is handy for um and then i'll i use face rig quite a bit as my uh, avatar of choice whenever i have an avatar on the screen so there's um, and FaceRig even mentions that Steam is the only way that they're able to distribute their software and make a profit because, you know, they're concentrating on making the software and improving it and maintaining it. That's the other benefit of having this as the uh, distribution platform of choice. You get all the updates through Steam as well. So by and large, it works pretty well. Every once in a while, there have been problems, uh, but it's been such a rare occurrence that I have no personally no reservations against uh, using uh, Steam as the platform of choice for a lot of things. So that, that's Steam in a nutshell. It's, uh, it's a way to get uh, access to digital goods. Remember, they're licensed, not owned. You do have to log in every once in a while to Steam, so that's the limitation. You can play it on Windows, you know, Linux, uh, uh, Mac OS, and uh, sometimes there are cloud saves, but you want to check and make sure and sometimes there are third-party EULAs where they can't get uh, people to come and look at their own platforms. Uh, <clears throat> I'm thinking of you, uh, Ubisoft. <laughs> so they'll put things out here on Steam, and then you still have to download a separate launch client in order to actually get to their title. Because, well, they can't get anyone to come directly to their site, and so they're you know, or maybe not enough people for their taste. So they'll come out here and they'll say, please, please buy our game. And uh, and now you have to install another launcher on top of that. Some people get upset and they're like, Steam, why? And it's like, well, it's not Steam's fault. It's the publisher, you know, uh, of that title. You know, Steam is just the marketplace. And they're like, eh, if you want to sell your digital goods here, that's fine. But uh, unfortunately, some will require a third-party launcher I hate that. I, I'm so sick of launchers. Uh, that That's just me, one gamer to another. Stop doing that, you know, uh, companies. It, uh, when I see that I have to download a third-party launcher in addition to Steam, you know what? Nine times out of ten, I'm not going to buy that title. Heck, even if it's free. By the way, that's uh, something else. Um, not everything on Steam costs money. There are things on here that are free. Uh, of course, you know, when you say free, remember, we're probably talking about in-game purchases. So there are going to be microtransactions that fund them, but you could download the software for nothing and, and try it out. You know, and then they'll find ways to say, well, you know, if you just paid a couple of dollars, uh, Star Trek Online is, is one of those. It's a free-to-play game. I told myself, I am not going to spend any money on Star Trek Online. And then they're like, hey, we have the original series, Constitution-class starships and uniforms. For just a few dollars, I was like, ah, oh, you know, my resolve to not spend money on Star Trek Online lasted about five minutes. Um, and now I'm, oh, face palm, a lifetime member. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> it's up to the uh, 
the vendors of this uh, digital marketplace to make their offerings compelling so that you want to spend money. If they do a good job and you enjoy it, you can support them. And if you don't, uh, well, then don't. <laughs> and, uh, oh, by the way, here's probably the best benefit of Steam. Now, you might be saying to yourself, Joe, do I have to have a credit card in order to use this site? I don't know if I trust these Steam people. Well, no. As a matter of fact, notice over here, it talks about uh, you can get these little uh, gift cards for Steam that will add money to your Steam wallet. Uh, mine currently is at zero. But if I wanted to, you can just walk into, oh, I would say just about any drugstore or... Uh, Heck, uh, all the large stores like Walmart, Target, you know, will probably have these on the shelf. You go to the cashier, you give them some cash, and uh, presto, now you have uh, a digital card to be able to put on Steam. Of course, once the money goes into your Steam account, it's never coming out. But, you know, it is one way that you can fund a uh, Steam account without having a credit card. So that's that's another benefit. So if you're worried about... You know, what What happens if my uh, if I set up Steam and my child gets in there late at night and charges up a bunch of things? Well, the solution to that would be don't ever attach a credit card to your Steam account. And you could do that, you know. Like I said, you can just uh, fund it using gift cards and you'll be able to buy them from any store. And you'll still be able to take advantage of all the sales here without using a credit card. Although, yeah, they also have a uh, feature where, like, for example, if you want to, um, you can turn on family mode. Now, if you're worried about, say, a, a little one getting in there and charging a whole bunch of things, notice how the store is grayed out. It's like, Daddy, I, I want to go and put money on your credit card. And it's like, no, but you can't. You can't. Um, so you need to know what the pin is in order to exit family mode. So that's that's another feature which I, I think gets overlooked. A lot of people are not aware of it. So you can set that up in your profile settings, turn it on, and uh, give yourself a pin. Um, you still have full access to everything that's in the library. So you can go in and play everything and have lots of fun, but you can't charge anything. and You can't even see the store as long as that uh, family mode is activated. So I hope this was helpful to you as to figuring out, okay, what is Steam? Um, so. It's a convenient way to get access to all kinds of interesting games and applications uh, and even videos. And uh, like I said, I, I like the fact that it doesn't require a credit card and sometimes you can save stuff into the cloud. So hmm, if you have a computer that dies, hey, you can or or you just want to switch onto another machine, you can always just uh, flip over if the cloud saves are supported. <laughs> See you next time.